All right, so I found this article last night, and it kind of just stuck with me enough to make me want to make a video about it today, which is a rare occurrence. Normally, I can sleep something off. Aladdin is bad. See, this is written by Skashi Kow. Skashi Kow. I have no idea. Just uh, BuzzFeed News reporter, though. No one cares about people ruining the things we loved when we were growing up, but that doesn't change the fact that the new Aladdin is objectively terrible. It may very well be a terrible movie. I, it's just kind of a rule of thumb, I don't go in expecting to like a live action adaptation of any source material. I feel like they're probably usually just bad movies. Like off the top of my head, Avatar comes to mind, my god was that terrible. The original animated Aladdin came out just a year after I was born, but I wore through the VHS for years afterwards. When adults asked me what my favorite movie was, I told them Aladdin. Not necessarily because it was true, that honor went to Sleeping Beauty, because I liked the way Maleficent said, why so melancholy? To some idiot white guy she captured. But, wait, what? <laughs> That's what made that your favorite movie? <laughs> oh great, you're definitely gonna be a good person but because it seemed apt how many disney movies about brown people was i going to get when i was a kid not many so i learned to love what i had so in order to like a movie it needs to involve brown people okay i've never felt that way don't get me wrong i'm happy anytime i see a black person in the source in some source material that i like mainly just because if i ever decide to take up cosplaying like i like I've thought about a few times, it'll be easy for me to look the part. Unless I dress as Goku Black, in which case it's just going to be ironic and funny. But even with all the representation afforded to me by these fictional brown people, there is no denying that Aladdin is the genie's movie. Not really. Sure, it pretends to be a story about a street rat winning over a princess, or about a princess trying to gain some autonomy, or about a bad guy yearning for ultimate power. It is not. Aladdin was a vehicle for Robin Williams' manic energy. I'd rewind to a few key points in the original Aladdin when I was a kid. Genie's frenzied introduction, Genie singing Aladdin into the palace, Genie finally being set free. Genie was the only character that lightened a movie that was mostly blandly romantic or kind of terrifying. Okay, I still don't personally find that to be the makings of this being Genie's movie. I haven't watched Aladdin for a long time, but to the best of my knowledge, did Genie have a character arc? He was just Genie. He was crazy and wacky, so of course kids loved him. But I'm pretty sure he was basically the same guy as when Aladdin first rubbed the lamp to as when he was freed from it. The original Genie was famously written for Robin Williams, and he did so much improv in the voice recordings that they had to rebuild parts of the script around him. And it works. Genie is one of the better Disney sidekicks. How could you call him a sidekick when you were just saying that this is his movie? He's warm and funny and kinetic, a giant blue freak who can morph into slot machine or Jack Nicholson or a zombie or a sheep or Arsenio Hall? I don't know what that is. Best of all, he keeps the movie moving so fast that you don't have time to stop, take a beat, and wonder if what's going on makes any sense. Well, no, it's a kid's movie. So in what world would the live-action Aladdin movie, out this Friday, ever match up to what only a cartoon could accomplish. Um, not very well, actually. I don't know who's expecting this movie to really match up to the original. The new movie, directed by Guy Ritchie, what, why? I'm guessing that's a bad director? Is the latest in a slate of Disney live-action films adapted from their decades-old animated sources. It remains completely unclear who wanted a live-action version of a movie like Dumbo, which is basically a horror movie about a morose elephant and Colin Farrell. But desire or not, Disney plans on making more of these well into the next decade, much to the chagrin of anyone who grew up on hand-drawn cartoon movies rather than CGI cats voiced by God herself. What? God herself. The Lion King. Oh, okay. That raises many more questions such as I I'm gonna assume that the only person in that video who would sound like God is James Earl Jones why are they calling him a woman maybe I've missed something feeling crusty about movies from your childhood getting remakes is little more than a great reminder that Millennials are getting old and no one cares what we think about people ruining the things we love 
when we were growing up, but that doesn't change the fact that the new Aladdin is objectively terrible. Sure, kids might like it, but kids like garbage. Well, that's just not correct. My friend's toddler son loves to watch me scream at him on FaceTime. His favorite toy appears to be his dog's foot. Well, you said toddler. So yeah, they are easily entertained. That's not the same as young children. Who cares what kind of movie he likes? Children's movies are just Trojan horse enjoyment for adults who are forced to take their kids to a family-friendly movie. In that regard, Aladdin does not bode well for anyone old enough to drink, but otherwise unable to when the movie is actually playing. I really don't feel like you should be reviewing movies. The original was a satisfying 90 minutes long, but the remake clocks in around two hours. The extra padding comes from the strange supplementary plot lines, like the addition of Nassim Pedrad as Jasmine's handmaiden slash horny weirdo slash brown Judy Greer type, who falls in love with Jeannie, played by Will Smith, or the inclusion of a new song, Speechless, about being silenced that Jasmine sings twice. You know, this, to me, sounds like the type of person that would complain if Jasmine didn't have enough lines, and now they're complaining that she has a new song. And as for Jeannie being given a love interest, well, that kind of goes back to what I said before. He didn't really have a character arc in the original movie, so they're, from the sound of it, they're just giving him one. That's a good thing. The greatest crime a kid's movie can commit is being boring. If you were hoping Jafar would be hot and gay and can't... gay? I don't think we were watching the same movie. You'll be disappointed to find that he's merely hot and only in a very mundane way. What is with that? Why would Jafar be gay? Like, he obviously wasn't, if you don't remember the creepy scene of, like, Jasmine in a slave Leia looking outfit. Will Smith's genie is practically sedate. His iteration of Prince Ali, much like Genie himself, is slowed down, disappointingly lifelike and tedious. Lifelike because it is a live action movie, slowed down because the man is 50. Give, I think he deserves a break. I'm mistaken, he had the d d decency to at least say no the first time they asked him to be Genie because he didn't want to be compared to Robin Williams' Genie. No one would want that. And in some warped attempt to meet a 2019 audience where they live, I regret to report that Jasmine is a nasty woman kind of feminist now. I mean, she still has no personality and her character still boils down to the core tenets of I don't want to marry the white guy. No one listens to me and my dad won't give me any political control even though I'm like 22 and don't even have a communications degree and I've barely ever gone outdoors. Okay, projecting. Still conventionally hot. What does conventionally hot mean? But now she wants to be Sultan. And great news, her dad lets her. This is a slight improvement from the ending of the original where Jasmine's plotline ends with her getting married, but ultimately it's still a movie about a princess falling in love with someone who tried to catfish her. I remember there's a preview where uh, I think Jeannie says, look, I only made you look like a prince. The rest is all on you. So he not really catfishing her. He's just getting in the door past her father. He's being honest with who he is, except for his name. Plus, the movie's director, producers, and writers, who are all nearly white men, were seemingly unequipped to deal with real world concerns like the Ex exotification of brown people in a live-action remake of an animated movie. Okay, what does it matter, the skin color of people who make a movie? Is there qualifications that are important? Have they made good movies? Is this their first movie? Do they have any talent at doing this? Why do we need to separate people by their race and gender? Agrabah isn't real, but using real people means we have to think about whether these real people are authentic to this fake city. Well, yeah, it's the setting. Why do some of the characters have American accents while the others have what can only be referred to as vaguely ethnic accents? I'm gonna assume it's the main characters with American accents, and that's probably so people can understand them, like little kids. Are they whitewashing this fake city by I just said they were all brown, how can it be whitewashing? Putting together cultures and ethnicities and vague histories. Is the bar so low that the public should praise a movie about brown people for managing to not cast white people? I thought that's why they were praising Black Panther, and it was, to me, just about an average movie. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't as great as people said. I suppose it is nice that there's nary a white face inside except for Billy Magnusson's who appropriately plays a prince that Jasmine hates. Why is that appropriate? 
And it is nice to no longer feel weird about Williams opening the movie with a catch-all brown person accent selling unreliable wares in a bazaar, little blessings in a chaotic world. Okay, screw this person. So it's appropriate that she hates a white guy. All right, there's definitely no hidden agenda behind this writer. And she's glad she doesn't have to hear Robin Williams opening the video. I didn't find his voice to be at all insulting and definitely I wouldn't have described it as a catch-all brown person accent. It just looked like the type of voice that that character would have. I thought that is what you did during voice acting. Relative realism of Aladdin, at least compared to the cartoon, opens the movie up to far too many questions that cannot be reasonably answered using real people with real facial expressions and real eyeballs who are assumed to have real genitals. Why do you watch movies? <laughs> like, is how is this what you are thinking of when you see these movies? It forces viewers to think too hard about the movie's complete lack of logic. Some, like me, were understandably upset that Aladdin, who awakened my sexuality to six years old, would not be sure. Okay. Did you have to include that? The movie inexplicably gives Genie a love interest in the form of a real human woman. Presumably, he turns into a human man when he sees... Why wouldn't he be a man? He's kind of obviously male. When he ceases to be blue after Aladdin sets him free. Okay, I don't... I don't remember... Or I have no way of knowing if it's true, but I remember them releasing images of Genie, and no one liked him. At, no one liked the blue Will Smith. So I don't know if he was always going to be blue, or maybe they changed it because people didn't like it. In which case, they're listening to the fan base, and that's good. Does that mean Genie has been a virgin for thousands and thousands of years? What does that matter? Who cares? If Genie is able to repair the magic carpet when it gets torn, why can't he do literally anything he wants to save everyone from Jafar? Because there are rules of being a Genie. The way I look at it is if he's gonna help, someone, obviously someone who can speak, the carpet can't, they have to wish for it. Rule. You, it is barely a strain on the suspension of disbelief. If the Sultan decides to make Jasmine the Sultan at the end of the movie, does she even need to get married at all? Well, no, but the idea is that she loves Aladdin. So they get married. I think that's a good message. I know that no one cares that I, a grumpy 28-year-old, raised on a healthy diet of Disney movies that my parents put on so they could fight in Hindi and Kashmiri and English in the other room in peace. Okay, you just that had a really messed up childhood, and I think that's explaining a few things. Okay, this review, I think, is just a load of crap. They obviously just want to be mad at something. What are some of the comments? Good God, girl, have a drink, go to the spa, do some yoga. Your reviews are always so negative and unpleasant. Lighten up a little. I don't know why this person is reviewing movies. They certainly don't seem to have an unbiased opinion of them. Or even, like, even slight bias is expected, but this is pretty heavy-handed. Now, personally, I don't know if I'm going to go see the Aladdin movie. I don't exactly have any plans to, but if the opportunity arises, I might go see it. I doubt it's gonna be this awful as this person seems to think. There's really only one way to find out, I guess. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Let's me know people are watching this stuff. I'm Alexander Lee and him, and I will see you all next time. Have a good day.